Welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. This video is my review of the Wharfdale Evo 4.2, which are a three way SLPP or slot loaded, profiled, ported 599 pound bookshelf speaker system. Now, if you're a regular to this channel, this review is going to be quite different to the other reviews that I've done previously because this review is going to be all about comparisons because the Wharfdale Evo 4.2 speakers are one of nine different bookshelf speakers, all costing £650 or less that I'm reviewing as part of what is really a bookshelf speaker group mega test. I'm going to review all the speakers individually and I'll be comparing the speakers to all the other speakers that have been reviewed in this group before it. And at the end, I'll create a conclusion video where I tell you which are my best speakers for certain reason. But what about the Evo 4.2 speakers? Which speakers am I going to compare them to? Well, interestingly, I've just reviewed the other Wharfdale speakers, which you might be considering buying as opposed to the Evo 4.2 or any speakers from the Evo range. Those are the Wharfdale Linton Heritage speakers, which cost pretty much double what these Evo 4.2 do at £1,099. And yet, even though they cost double, I know there'll be people at home considering between the Wharfdale Lintons and the Wharfdale Evo 4.2 or the others in the range. And I'm sure those people are really interested for me to tell you about the differences. So I'm gonna jump straight into the sound quality and the sound quality differences between the Wharfdale Evo 4.2 and the Wharfdale Lintons. And in general and in the main, the sound presentations from both of these speaker systems are very different. They are in fact totally different. To better explain these differences, I've got myself a prop. Now this is a bag of pepper pig raisins. Seems crazy, but bear with me. So looking at this arrangement of Peppa Pig raisins, the boxes are the speakers, the Wolfdale Lintons, and where and how the raisins are arranged is how I want to show you or represent how the Wharfdale Lintons sound. As you can see, there is a lot of sound in the center between the speakers and there's a lot of raisins there. So a lot of music is played there and then we have some big elements to the left and to the right, really only as wide, or maybe just slightly wider than the speakers. If we look at the arrangement of raisins from the Evo 4.2 speakers, you can see how the raisins are now more spaced out. There is more organization to them. They are cleaner in their layout and you can see there is less of the raisins clumped together. So the individual elements within this sound stage or mix of music are not quite as big and not quite as full, but there is more clarity and space between them. Hopefully the use of raisins does make a little bit more sense now. And I just think it was a good way to visualize how these speakers present sound. As I mentioned, it's very different. You know, you could look at those two different raisin diagrams and you could make an assumption really that the Evo 4.2 are a better speaker than the Lintons because they space everything out and everything's kind of clearer and more open. And yes, I think that could be the correct interpretation of that information. That's kind of how I feel about the differences between the speakers myself, but it just really isn't that simple and it really isn't that easy. In terms of setting the speakers up in my listening room, I had the Evo 4.2 placed in pretty much the same spot as the Wharfdale Linton speakers. And when it came time to measure the speakers, the Lintons measured quite significantly better in terms of an even response in the mid-range and treble and in terms of a bass response compared to the Evos. And as a result, they sounded better as well. It was easier to get you know, a satisfying, more balanced sound presentation from the Lintons than it was from the Evo 4.2. That is where 
you know, some Terry Ellis Dirac Live magic comes in and I was able to use Dirac Live or some DSP to undo some of the negatives of the room's effects on the Evo 4.2 and kind of unlock more or much more really of what they can deliver as a speaker system. And obviously I did the same thing to the Wolfdale Lintons as part of their review also. The star of the show from the Wolfdale Linton speakers is the mid-range, big, solid, you know, tangible, engaging vocal, which has got really excellent resolution. It's really quite full sounding. And I was expecting the Evo 4.2 to fall quite short of the Lintons in terms of vocal and mid-range delivery, but they didn't fall as short as I was expecting. And that's got to be thanks to that dedicated two inch soft dome mid-range driver. The vocal from the Evo 4.2 is not as big and it's not as full sounding as the vocals from the Lintons, but that also means it doesn't occupy and take up as much space within the central soundstage within music. So that means that the vocals actually have more space. So they feel like they are in more space, more space around them. And the vocals and mid-range delivery from the Evo 4.2 is clear, it's clean, it's fast, and I have absolutely no complaints about the mid-range or the vocal delivery from the Evo 4.2 for speakers at this price point, £599. Now, if you compared them to much more expensive bookshelf speakers, you could hear that the more expensive bookshelf speakers have a smoother and more refined and maybe a more harmonically rich mid-range delivery. But I think something to point out, Wolfdale have done an excellent job across these two speaker ranges, the Lintons and the Evo 4.2. I think they've really focused and concentrated on getting these speakers to deliver a really, you know, engaging, impressive, clean and clear, either big and bold or, you know, spacious kind of mid-range presentation. <laughs> Comparing the treble from both of these two speakers, the Wharfdale Lintons and the Wharfdale Evo 4.2 is really very interesting because we are actually comparing two completely different tweeter technologies here. We're comparing an AMT, an air motion tweeter to a one inch soft dome tweeter. And the differences in the technologies or really their impl implementations or both is very clear and obvious to hear. Because the Evo 4.2, as I keep talking about and showed you in the raisin diagram, have a more open and spacious sound presentation. The delivery of the treble intricacies and delicacies and the little bits of shimmeriness and kind of treble work that we hear within music comes through with much greater ease and significantly improved clarity. That makes the Evo 4.2 kind of sound like a higher resolution speaker in terms of treble, obviously it's not, it's not nothing to do with that, but that's just how they come across as a speaker system. And I think because they have a clearer and more easy treble to hear within a, a more open sound stage, it gives them more dimensionality as a speaker system. And what do I mean by dimensionality? Well, I just mean that you can more clearly hear the different layers within the music and within those layers, as I mentioned, you get to hear subtleties and intricacies of treble detail that can sometimes be more blurred or lost within a more full or warm sounding speaker system. Now comparing the bass from these two speaker systems is a very interesting one because as I've already mentioned, the Lintons measured better in my room from a bass point of view and they delivered naturally a much better bass performance than the Evo 4.2. However, after, again, some Terry Ellis Dirac Live magic, I was able to push the bass response from the Evo 4.2 to deliver what was really a very, very impressive, a damn near small floor stander amount of punchy, tight and controlled bass to get that performance up to somewhere around what I was able to get from the Lintons. What I think was interesting about this is that I applied the same type of DSP correction or work to both the speaker systems and the Evo 4.2 seemed more robust. They seemed less negatively affected by this. Whereas the Lintons, it maybe started to thicken up the mid range a little bit. And that definitely did not happen 
with the Evo 4.2 doing the same type of Dirac Live correction. I can't put any of that down to the Dirac Live. I can't put any of that down to the driver technology because both of the speakers feature a black Kevlar based base driver and the Lintons have a bigger driver. So I'm actually putting that down to the differences in the cabinet shape, design and construction. Obviously the Lintons have a rectangular cabinet, whereas the Evo have a curved cabinet and the cabinet design is borrowing technologies from Wharfdale's flagship speakers, the Elysium. I'm not a speaker designer, I can't 100% say that that's the case, but that's just kind of my best guess between the differences. Hopefully you've sat through this review video to this point and you're probably sitting there thinking, well, Terry thinks that the Evo 4.2 are a better speaker than the Wharfdale Lintons. And I think I do. I think they are a better, maybe a technically better speaker system. And I think that I think that because it's a more familiar sound to me and what I'm used to, a speaker system that wants to give us a very stereotypical hi-fi presentation where things are organized, things are spaced out. We have, you know, a really open and clear soundstage. And, and I do really enjoy that type of musical presentation from a set, a set of speakers and from a hi-fi system. But looking back over the two periods that I've spent with the Lintons and with the Wharfdale Evo 4.2s, I think I enjoyed the musical presentations from them both as much as each other, I just enjoyed them for different reasons. Now, a speaker system that gives us an open and, and kind of clear picture of the music that we're listening to, I think that gives us, or can give us a more deep or a deeper listening situation. You can listen into the music more. I think the trade-off of that is that it can become or naturally becomes a more analytical process because we are more actively listening, focusing on the different aspects or the different elements of the sound or the music that we are listening to. A trade-off or a negative of that can be we are then brains switched on and analytical to any imperfections or parts of the music that we don't think are perfect. Well, that's certainly how my brain works, you know, hence the name of the channel. Whereas I think with the Lintons, they give you a bigger, kind of less spread out type of presentation, but you are then more focused on the music as a whole. And that kind of disengages your analytical side of your brain and it just kind of makes your head tap and your head bob, sorry, and your feet tap. And I think it just has a different emotional impact on you. This is not me saying one is better than the other. It's just kind of the differences that I experience with both of the speaker system. Overall, I must say I've been really very impressed with the Wharfdale Evo 4.2 speakers because you know, I think they deliver a good mixture of everything, good clarity, good resolution, good sound staging, good overall space. They've got that airiness that some audio files really seem to like. I don't really like that term airiness. To me, it doesn't mean anything. But, you know, if you like a sound that's airy, you know, that's exactly what these speakers are going to give you with good resolution, good vocals, and the potential to give you really good, tight and punchy bass as well. <music> So for the design and build quality of the Evo 4.2, I think the first thing that I want to point out to you is their physical size. These are a large bookshelf speaker system. These are by far and by quite a considerable margin, the largest speaker from these nine in this group test. And if we look at the shape of the Evo 4.2, it is pretty much a totally curved cabinet which is you know very stand out within this group 
test because if we look at the speakers from some of the other larger speaker manufacturers, Bowers and Wilkins with the 606, Focal with the 806 and Klipsch with the RP600M, they are all very much rectangular boxes. And there's something that you could very easily miss and that is the SLPP, the slot loaded profiled port system, which is very cleverly disguised or hidden between the Evo 4.2 base plate and then the speaker above it. Now, one thing that is very impressive to me, and again, very standout for these speakers, among the other speakers in this group test are the speaker cable binding posts, which are, for starters, dual binding posts, so you could buy amp these speakers if you want to. They are just very nice quality of speaker cable binding posts that Wharfdale have used and definitely a nicer quality than some of the other speakers in this group test. So for my final thoughts on the Evo 4.2 speakers, they have set a very high bar for all the other eight speakers in this group test to follow and that is because they have delivered pretty much everything to a very good standard good clarity good resolution good space good musicality good communicativeness in terms of delivering a musical message to me open clear and spacious and allowing me to go deep into the music and in the main they've delivered a very good bass performance for a, a bookshelf speaker and all of that is especially good for a speaker at this price point. Now the big question I'm sure some of you really want to ask me is which of the two speakers would I choose? Would I choose the Wharfdale Lintons or would I choose the Wharfdale Evo 4.2? Well I think if I had the budget for the Lintons I would probably choose the Evo 4.4 because I preferred the sound presentation from the Evo 4.2. I really appreciated the Lintons for what it did, but I think the 4.2 is just more familiar to me. It's more like a comfy pair of slippers in terms of how they present sound to me, but I like a lot of bass. So naturally the bigger Evo 4.4 is going to give me more bass with extra bass drivers. Interestingly, the Lintons do deliver everything really that the Evos don't. And I think the Evos deliver everything that the Lintons don't. But there is a lot of similarities. There are a lot of common denominators between both of these two speaker systems, which you know tick a lot of the right boxes. And then, then both speaker systems have their own characteristics, which will make them suitable for different audio files with different tastes. And you know, I'm not here to tell you which is right for you and wrong for you. I'm just here to explain to you the differences between them and you pick whichever you prefer. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you particularly enjoyed my use of raisins to explain the differences between two speakers. I doubt you've ever seen that on YouTube before. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you're new here. And I just wanna say thanks very much for watching the review up until the end. And just to remind you, there's going to be eight other comparison type speaker reviews coming over the next few weeks. So make sure you've hit the notification bell so you get you know, a notification when these videos go live. Thanks very much again for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care, bye. <music>